Good evening, good evening. Welcome again to another of our Wednesday evening prayer ministry. It is that point, that little hump in the week that the Lord seeks to bring us through. So I'm glad you are here. I'm excited that you are here with us as we pray and share and fellowship together. I want to let you know that you have tuned in again to FWP Center, and that is the First Seventh-day Adventist Church of White Plains. And on behalf of our pastor, Dr. Sean Dowding, and all the members of our pastoral team, we just want to say with you, welcome and thank you for being with us. I want to let you know that you should share this link. Go ahead, please share with, with your friends, your family members, everyone that's in your contact list, whether it be in your cell phone or on Facebook, don't leave anyone out. Go ahead and share that link. So I'm Adrian Alvaranga, and right beside me, I have my beautiful wife. Georgia Alvaranga, welcome everyone. Amen, amen. We're about to get started. As usual, we always start with a word of prayer. And then after the prayer, we will have an opening song. And then after the song, I come back and give you a little bit more about our program. But now I invite you to bow your heads with us as we pray to begin. Loving Lord, we do thank you so much for this opportunity that you have granted unto us so we can come together once more to praise you, to worship you, to give thanks. Lord, I thank you that you have um, kept us safe thus far until this Wednesday, and we still have a few more days to go before the week ends. We ask that you just continue to keep us safe, guide us, protect us from all harm and danger. Be with those who are gonna be coming on to join us soon. I pray that you will be with them and keep them as well. Forgive us of all our sins, oh God, and be with this program now. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. How many know that he's our everlasting life? Come on, let's sing it together. The Lord, the Lord is my life salvation. Whom shall I fear? Shall I be afraid? The Lord is my life and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? I will wait on you. 
Amen, 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 amen. amen. Thank you so much to our very own FWP Praise Team. You know, I tried to audition for that once, it didn't work out, but they're doing a <laughs> wonderful, wonderful job. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You know, friends, as usual, I always share with you something that I learned this week. And this week from our Adventist News Network, I was reading a little bit about um, improving the heart health of children and the article there says how can we improve my child's heart health and um, they gave us just a few points five two one and zero so let's remember those numbers five two one zero so five they recommend five servings of fruits and vegetables they recommend you get your child to eat five servings of fruits and vegetables they didn't say how you're going to do that but they do recommend and they say um, that when you're shopping include a rainbow of produce so different colors right um, green broccoli or green beans some yellow bell peppers red apples and so forth so five servings of fruits and vegetables mm -hmm. and then the two so we're doing five two one zero right so the two is two hours of screen time or less. So no more than two hours of screen time. And the idea here is how does this contribute to heart mm -hmm. health? Um, well, if your child is consuming too much screen time, it will impact their um, body mass, BMI, body mass index. And so um, the less screen time they have, the better it is. It says BMI um, is your weight corresponding to your height. Higher BMI, of course, can increase um, you, your risk of being overweight or obese. Um, so five, two, one, zero. So one is one hour of physical activity. Children need at least an hour of physical activity. And this can be just playing on the playground, or it can be walking the dog, or anywhere the child can be active. And then zero is zero sugared or zero sugar sweetened beverages. So you want to try and take that out of their diet, these excessive um, sweetened drinks, soft drink, fruit drinks, fruit punches, and all of that. Try not to have anything that is sweetened with sugar as best as possible. Um, they do recognize that making all these changes can be challenging, so they recommend you do it in steps. You know, not try to do everything at once. Um, do it in steps. Um, Franson, who the article says, I know it's not easy for myself or my patients to make these changes by themselves. It's easier if you get the entire family involved. And these are good for your health, no matter what your age. Whatever the family does, the children is more likely to follow. Now, as we're talking about child heart health, um, it also leads into um, one of the prayer requests. So this week I got a prayer request. It actually is a reminder of a prayer request because my cousin had reached out to me to pray for a little boy, his name is Malachi. And Malachi was actually born with um, a challenge with one of the valves for his heart. And so we have been praying for him. He was on life support and we have been praying for him. Um, God has been good. He has been steadily improving and they expect within a few days um, to take him off the breathing machine. The doctors think that he should be able to now breathe on his own. Um, and so we continue to pray for little Malachi, who was born with a little challenge with his heart. Um, we also want to keep praying for little Nuri Hill. Um, as we know, she is back home. And she's continue to improve so let's just continue to pray for her i want to also remember our young people i was so blessed by the ay program on sabbath as we see our young people transition into adults 
Uh, we see how they gave testimonies of, you know, the impact that the church has had um, on their life, um, both in school, growing up, in colleges, and now they're working. And we could see that God indeed has been blessing our young people. We also want to um, continue to pray for our seniors. Ask that God would just continue to bless them and keep them. I know this is, of course, is challenging times, but let's just continue to lift them up. Um, in our chat, we're seeing a request coming from our church clerk, Sister Patrice Clark. She's asking us to keep her husband, Derek, in prayer as he continues to heal and continues to get stronger. Mm -hmm. And we say we will continue to pray. Also seeing a, another prayer request coming in from the comment section. And thank you so much for keep um, our chat section buzzing. Thank you so much. We are asking for prayer for the music ministry, praying for the entire music ministry from the leadership to all the members and for those who would love to join as well we just need the gift. Let's pray for those persons as well, including myself. All right. Um, tonight we have Sister Clark representing our music, um, sorry, our prayer ministry. And she will do the intercessor prayer for us. But just before I turn over to Sister Clark, I'll ask my beautiful wife, Georgia, do you have a prayer song for us? Yes, I do. Number 524 from our hymnals, tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. And because we trust in Jesus so much, we know that he is able to heal. He's able to give us jobs. He's able to do the unthinkable, right? So we're going to sing this first verse and the chorus. To, um, you can sing it together with me. All right, so let's go. Tis so sweet. To trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know the said the Lord, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him. How I proved him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him. How I proved him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. And just before I turn over to you again, Sister Clark, I'm seeing one more prayer request coming in mm -hmm. from Angela. She's asking us to pray for her uncle-in-law who had brain surgery today. He's 88 years old. So let's pray for Angela's uncle-in-law who had brain surgery today. Over to you, Sister Clark. Thank you, Elder Alvaranger and Sister Alvaranger. May the Lord bless you guys. Let us bow our heads, or if you can kneel, please let us kneel. Now, dear Lord, as we pray, Take our hearts and minds far away from the press of this world all around to your throne where grace does abound. May our lives be transformed by your love. May our souls be refreshed from above. At this moment, let people everywhere join us now as we come to you in prayer. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Break me, melt me, mold me, fill me, forgive me. 
as I petition to you on behalf of your people. Forgive me of my sins, dear Jesus, so that my prayer can come up to you and you can answer it as you see fit. We thank you for who you are, the only true God of the nations of every kindred, tongue, and people. We thank you that you went to that cruel cross for us. You take upon yourself the sins of mankind. Oh, that men and women and girls and boys would worship you. Tonight, we beg of you to create in all of us a clean heart and renew the right spirit within us. May we cling to you, Lord, and may we hold on to you. Please don't let us go, but let our minds stay on you. Tonight, we are praying. We have family and friends and members who are suffering. So we put our pastor and his family into your care. Supply their needs according to your wishes in glory. Fill them with wisdom and understanding and give them more power from on high. We call upon you for our church members. Those are looking jobs. Those that are looking homes to live. Those that need money to pay their bills. I know you own the entire world and the million cows upon the hilltop belong to you. So you can supply every need according to your riches in glory. We pray for our heads of department. We pray for our music department. We pray for our deacon and deaconesses. We pray for our elders. We pray for the ministers, Lord. Have mercy, Lord, on each ministry. Every last one of us is your children. So we depend upon you to fill us with your Holy Spirit, to provide for us our needs. But you said, you know our needs, you know, Lord, but you said we are to come and ask you, and that's what we are doing. We pray for our children, especially those who've gone to college for the first time. We are asking you to protect and guide them and fill them with the knowledge that they are gone for. And when they seek you, Lord, all other things will be added unto them. We pray for the smaller children that are taking the bus and their families are taking them to school. Be with them in their going out and their coming in. Now that we are hearing that they're having a mandate of the mask, that they are going to remove the mask from the, the schools. But Lord, you know all things and you will cure this disease in your time. It's only you who can take this disease away from us. We pray for the sick and the shutins. We pray for our seniors. We pray for Malachi. We pray for little Nereen. We pray for Derek. We pray for Angela, uncle-in-law, and all those that lost their loved ones. We beg of you to get them better, those that are sick. And those that lost their loved ones, we are asking you to comfort them and let them know that if they be, 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 be became righteous like their loved ones, they will see them again in the earth made new. Lord, we come to you only because you are God and God alone. We are praying for those who are, who are seeking for jobs. Have mercy upon them and provide the right job for them. Some are seeking for homes to live in. Some need food to eat. But we have so many pantries into the world that they are not lack of food, but let them find the right place and the right people to talk to. Those that are seeking you, Lord, may they find you. May we live a victorious life that they can see that in you there is love, there is understanding, there is joy and peace. And may they find you before it's too late. Lord, I must pray for the one that is appointed tonight to give the word. May as he go in front of us and stand, we will never see him nor hear him, but we will see Jesus Christ himself 
speaking through him and we may be refreshed and others may come to join in and praise your living name. Spirit of our living God, fall afresh on him. Break us and mold us into your own image. May we all have a love relationship for you, Lord. And may we seek you first and then all other things will be added unto us. As we come to you, Lord, you see us and you know our hearts and you know our desire and you know our relationship with us. May we be obedient people and may we walk humbly into your sight so that when you come, you can say, come he blessed of my father. I have some wonderful place prepared for you, a mansion. Come and enjoy it. We are praying, Lord, for those who have nowhere to live. They are in the cold right now. So I beg of you to let this government give you a chance to come into their hearts so that you can dwell in their hearts and you can tell them exactly what to do. And when you come, Lord Jesus, with the forgiveness of our sins, we are asking you to take us home to live with you to senseless ages of eternity, we pray. This is our humble prayer tonight. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen, amen. Thank you so much, Sister Clark. Uh, we've come to that point in our program where we'll hear a word from the Lord. Tonight, the Lord has chosen with his own hands, or his, his man servant, his uh, person that is, should be quite familiar to you. If you tune in to our programs on Sabbath, yes. I bet you the very first voice you will hear is the voice of this person. Um, he is, of course, an elder in our church, Elder Donald Webb. He serves in Sabbath school as well as with our young people through Pathfinders. We're grateful, Elder Webb, for the ministry that God has blessed you with and how you share it with our church. Just before we hear from Elder Webb, we will have a meditation song after which the next voice you hear is that of Elder Donald Webb. Let's breathe a word of prayer in our hearts as he comes to us.
Good night, good night, good night, everyone. Well, it's Wednesday night. It's prayer meeting night. And we've been having a great time since we started. And we want to say thanks to Elder Adrian Alvaranga and Mrs. Alvaranga for leading out so ably and so well. I want to thank Sister Clark for your uh, prayer. And pastor, you know, we can always do that song. His goodness is running after us. Thank you, pastor. We want to say thanks to those who are joining us tonight. I always love in the middle of the week to experience the blessings, the extra blessings of God. And especially when we come to prayer me meeting, we are refilled, we are revived, and we are rejuvenated, and so we can face the rest of the week. Thank you so much. Tonight, I want to spend a few minutes to talk to you on the title, Hope Not Hate. Hope Not Hate. Let us pray. Our Father, our God, our loving Savior, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You have spared our lives, Lord, to see this evening where we can come together again as a church to sing, to pray, and to praise your matchless name and to testify of your goodness towards us. I ask that you will have your own way even now with everyone that will hear these words. I pray that you will be with me, and I pray that you will speak through me. Forgive me of my sins and save me and save us when you come in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, Proverbs 10 and verse 12, in the, um, my friend says, hatred stirs up conflict but love covers over all wrongs. Proverbs 10, verse 12, hatred stirs up conflict, 
but love covers over all wrongs. You know, the month of February is celebrated as Black History Month in America. Usually, the first person comes to your mind when you talk about Black History Month is Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. In one of his most famous sermons, Loving Your Enemies, Dr. King preached, and I quote, returning hate for hate multiplies hate adding deeper darkness to the night already devoid of stars. He went on to say, darkness, Elder Alvaranga, cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. End of quote. We are learning, my dear friends, every day as a church, and living here in America, that we cannot pick and choose who we love and who we hate. We can't say we love, but in our hearts, we hate. You see, what comes out, people hear, but what's inside, God knows. We are to love everyone regardless Regardless of who they are, we have no choice when it comes on to love. Bible says, thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. You know, President Ronald Reagan in his 1986 proclamation recognizing February as Black History Month, he says, the foremost purpose of Black History Month is to make all Americans aware of this struggle of freedom for freedom and equality, equal opportunity. He went on to say that, uh, 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 that this must be the message of America. You know, this sound to me like he's saying we are to love each other regardless, without choice. We have no choice when it comes on to love. I did some more research and I saw we are in a Review and Herald article dated January 21, 1896 under the title, Am I My Brother's Keeper? Ellen G. White, made a very serious statement. She said, the law of God contained in the New Testament reveals to man his duty to love God supremely and his neighbor as himself. This sounds to me like she's saying, we are to love each other regardless. You know, that's good advice for any time, but it seems particularly relevant during a pandemic, right? Mm -hmm. When was the last time uh, nearly all, if not all, the humans on the planet were impacted by the same affliction? This sounds to me like we have an obligation to love each other regardless and without choice. Hate has become quite the overused word. We let hate into our hearts and it sits there and festers inside of us. When we allow hate to take over, we allow darkness to enter into us. It clouds our judgment, it makes us more negative and adds bitterness to our lives. However, God offers us another direction. He tells us that we can overcome hate and replace it with love. We can replace hate with love, with forgiveness and acceptance. God gives us a chance to bring the light back into our hearts, no matter how much we try to hold onto the hate. Hatred and racism, my dear friends, existed even in the church long before our time. And what church seem, it may still be struggling with this pandemic of hate. 
In fact, from the beginning pages of scripture, we see that hatred resides in the heart of every man. Even in the best of circumstances, no man is immune from actions and feelings of hate. We all can easily go down there, of course. You know, Jesus quoted the popular proverb of the day. He said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. They knew exactly that hating our enemy is the most common response. However, Jesus then flipped the script, Pastor, and asked us to take seriously several illustrations of hatred that are common dynamics of hate and to understand how they are impacting relationships all around us. Acts 17 and verse 26 says, From one man he made all the nations, that they should inhabit the whole earth, and, the, and, and he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. Hatred, my friends, and racism existed even in the church long before our time. We have a responsibility now as a church in today's world, as we get closer to the end of time, to bring hope to a dying world and not hate. People who hate need Jesus and are and, uh, desperately as any of us. We don't know their history, my friends. We don't know what they are going through, what they have dealt with, what they are dealing with even now, how they have been hurt, the influences in their lives or the examples that have been set for them. Sometimes we don't know why people hate, but we should not accept it. We should bring hope and not hate. Instead of approaching hate with an attitude of, it's their choice or it's their problem. Let's remember, my dear friends as believers, if we have a relationship with Jesus, we have that hope that even hurting, broken, guarded, misled or difficult persons need. You know, if, if NASA, most of us know about NASA, if NASA encounters a problem with a process, they go to the person who developed the process. If a problem is found in a new invention, they go to the inventor. Then it makes sense that if we have a hope problem, and if we have a hate problem, we need to go to our creator, the God of love and the God of hope. People need hope, not hate. Romans 12 verse 12 says, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. There is no better place, though, my friends, to encounter the hope of Jesus Christ than in a church. And there is no hope, no more effective type, and there is no more effective type of church for sharing the hope of Jesus than a church that is loving and caring. No wonder we got opening the church on this coming Sabbath. We don't have to be within six feet of one another to know that what I'm saying to you, my friends, is true. The hope of Jesus Christ will outlast this pandemic. We need to share it now when people are possibly in a place to understand its importance more than ever. There is so much people have to put up with these days and with difficult people in the church, at work, at home, around us. It is not helping the situation, my friends. People are searching for love. They are searching for hope, not it. What we do know is if you are hurting though, my friends, whatever the hurt, Jesus is the solution. Whatever the injustice, it is Jesus who one day will make all things right. 
Whatever you are going through, Jesus will give you the strength to endure. And whatever love you may desire or that has been withheld from you, it is Jesus who will fill that void. We need to love more every day, my friends. People need hope, not hate. We need to extend our love to others more each day. We cannot say we love God and not love each other. No matter who they are, what they have done, or how they deal, how they feel about other people, we must love them. We need to love people the way Christ does. The love of Christ constrains us, the Bible says. Hatred stirs up conflict. Church, we need Christ's help to keep us from hating each other. As part of the body of Christ, we must let the world know that love exists, love flows, love reigns among the church family. Criticism, judgment, presupposition, assumptions, stereotyping, prejudice, demonizing, hating from pretending does not and should not and cannot exist amongst us as a church. We must, as believers, practice compassion. We must practice empathy. We must practice understanding, tolerance, hope, and love. If we feel angry, or if we have a problem with anger, let us ask God to help us to be calm, to be cheerful, and to be contented. If we feel confused, let us ask God to give us clarity and understanding. If we feel defeated, God can help you to be victorious and triumphant. If we feel vengeful, if we feel vengeful, we must pray and God can help you to be gracious and to be forgiven. If we feel grieved, God can give you comfort. He will thrill you and he will cheer you. God alone, my dear friends, have the power to give life, to renew life, to change life, and to make life matters, whether it is black life, unborn life, or all life. Life matters to God so much so that his own son gave his life for you and for me to have our life. Life matters to God. The late Desmond, Bishop Desmond Tutu of South Africa says that goodness is stronger than evil and love is stronger than hate. We are to practice love, my friends, not hate. Give hope, not hate. We look at Jesus who was placed on the cross by hate. But even then, he did not return that hate. Rather, he looked on those who killed him, who expressed their hatred through this act, and had only pity on them, saying to his dear father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. We replace hate with love when we practice to love our enemies, those who seemed determined to destroy us and pray for those who persecute us and rather respond with the same kindness and care we show to everyone else. As America celebrates Black History Month, you see this lived out in the teachings and actions of the same Martin Luther King Jr. He believed, my dear friends, that violence, which is usually the, the direct expression of hatred, it was immoral. Dr. King came to this conclusion while he was looking at Jesus' Sermon on the Mount and became, and because violence was immoral, he could not resort to it. What Dr. King understood is that someone somewhere must break the vicious cycle of violence in order to, as he puts it, cut off the chain of hate and evil. This vicious cycle says that if you hit me, I hit you. 
If you take a life, I take a life. But uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. saw that, that Jesus broke this vicious cycle of retaliation when he brought us the law of love when Jesus stretched out his arms and died for all of us, even those who hated and placed him there. John in Revelation says, after this, I looked and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, every tribe, every people and language standing before the throne and before the lamb. My dear family, you will not experience this like John. If you hate, you won't be in that number when you hoard hatred in your heart. Hear this. I won't let you prevent me from being in that great number because you hate me. That's your yoke, not mine. If you hate me, I still love you. When you talk bad about me, I still speak well about you or don't speak anything. When you post, when you share, or when you like evil comments, whether it's about me, the church, the pastor, or any member, instead of hating you, I block you or delete you, or I, but I still love you, and I'm not going to hate you. Get that. You know, my favorite quote from Dr. Martin Luther King was, in the end, we will not remember the harsh words of our enemies as much as the silence of our friends. Virtually recalling the apostles' treatment of Jesus Christ before he was tried, convicted, and executed. And John 3, verse 16 says, For God so loved the world. We are to love, we are to give uh, hope, my dear friends, and not hate. The song says, He gave his life. Oh, what more could he give? Oh, how he loves you. Oh, how he loves you and me. As I come down to a close, my dear church family, one of the ways we can extend this love is through prayer. And thank God for prayer meetings. Thank God for the prayer lines and the many active prayer lines that, our, that exist in our church today. We may not have the perfect words to pray when we pray, my dear friends, but we can turn to the Bible and learn a thing or two about how to pray for difficult people who hate. They can't give a smile. They can't experience happiness because of hate. David, Paul, Joseph, Stephen, Peter, and Jesus there is much to be learned from all of these men. The scripture tells the story. Let God's word lead us into praying to love people and not hate. We are to correct and not humiliate. And we are to keep our harsh words to ourselves or get rid of them share a little story with you of an old man who meets a young man who asks him, do you remember me? And the old man says, no. Then the young man tells him he was his student and the teacher asked, what do you do? What do you do in life? The young man answers, well, I became a teacher. Ah. How good, like me, asked the old man. Well, yes. In fact, I became a teacher because you inspired me to be like you. The old man, curious, asked the young man at what time he decided to become a teacher. And the young man tells him the following story. He says, one day, a friend of mine was also a student came in with a nice new watch and I decided I wanted that watch and I stole it. I took it out of his pocket. Shortly after my friend noticed that his watch was missing and immediately complained to our teacher 
who was you? Then you address the class by saying, this student's watch was stolen during class today. Whoever stole it, please return it. I didn't give it back because I didn't want to. You closed the door of the class and you told all of us to stand up and form a circle in the classroom. You were going to search our pockets one by one until the watch was found. However, you told us to close our eyes because you would only look for his, this watch if we all had our eyes closed. We did as you instructed. You went from pocket to pocket, and when you went through my pocket, you found the watch and took it. You kept searching everyone's pocket. And when you were done, you said, you all now can open your eyes because we have found the watch. You didn't tell on me. You never mentioned the episode. You never said who stole the watch or where you found it. The day, that day, you saved my dignity forever. It was the most shameful day of my life. But this is also the day I decided not to become a thief, a bad person, or to hate. You never said anything, nor did you even call me or take me aside to give me a moral lesson. I received your message, teacher, clearly. Thank you. I understood. What, I re what a real educator needs to do. Do you remember this, this, this episode, Professor? The little old professor answered, yes, I remember the situation with the stolen watch, which I was looking for it in everyone's pocket. I didn't remember you because I also closed my eyes while I was looking for the watch. My dear beloved, I hope you get this message tonight. If to correct, you must humiliate, you don't know how to teach. My dear beloved, I share these few words with you tonight simply because it has been resting on my heart because I realize that there is hatred in the church. I do not know when I speak tonight, if someone out there hates me, I am not speaking for myself, but because we are part of the body of Christ, I entreat you tonight to love each other. I pray that our God in heaven will convict us of hate, whether we think it, speak it, advocate it or act on it, we must eradicate our hatred for one another on all sides for any reason. Finally, my appeal to you tonight is that God will humble us so we can love others like he loves us, John 13, 35 says. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples if ye have love one to another. Let us share hope, not hate. If this is your desire, won't you just bow your heads with me where you are and pray with me. Almighty God and our Father, I thank you, Lord, for all that you have done and for working through me tonight. It is my prayer that no one tonight will take these words uh, as, as if we are throwing words, but that each of us will examine ourselves far and we will close our eyes like this professor and turn our eyes to see Jesus and Jesus only. Help us to love each other and not hate each other so that our church will be a loving church where the rest of the world will feel comfortable to worship and find a home in Jesus. 
forgive us of our sins, we pray. When the day come, Lord, that we shall meet with you on that celestial shore, may all of us within the hearing of my voice be there, Lord, to say thank you, Jesus, when you shall say welcome home. Well done. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, my friends. Enjoy the rest of the week. Amen, amen. Thank you so much, Ella Webb. What a timely and powerful message. We live in a world where we are quickly dividing ourselves into different groups and becoming more and more intolerant of each other. But, you know, as the Lord has poured out through his man servant, let us sheer hope, man, not hate. Let's, let, let's stop dividing ourselves. Let's 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 bond with each other. Any hate you have, let's use it to just appreciate. Let's use tolerate. Yeah, if you wanted something with it, appreciate, tolerate. <laughs> Do that. Yeah, you know. <laughs> um, um, and, 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 and 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 love each other. Powerful, powerful words. Thank you so much. Um, again, the web. Want to turn over to a pastor? Pastor, do you have any final thoughts you want to share? Before we close. I would just like to thank Elder Webb for such a timely message. It's a message of deep thought, provoking every heart. And I pray that we all, each and every one of us will take heed as we move forward in love and righteousness in the family of God. I trust that you will have a wonderful night and I pray that you will look forward to worship on Sabbath. We have a baptism coming up. Um, we will have the service from the church just for the participants. Um, we will make the announcement when we will have the public coming in. So God bless you as you go through the rest of the week. We pray for his grace and his mercy upon all of us, and more so, hope and not hate. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor. Thank you, Edna Webb. Thank you, Sister Clark. And thanks to everyone who have been burning up the chat. We really, really appreciated your comments. Um, you know, just want to say um, have a good evening. And see you again on Sabbath as we will continue to share hope, not hate. Have a good evening. Be blessed.